Okay, so for Christmas, I got a Best Buy gift card, which was pretty awesome. And I was like, what do I need to buy? Well, didn't know what I really needed to buy because I've worked on my computer and it's got good specs. And with a $50 Best Buy gift card, you're really not going to get a new video card or anything fancy about it. So I um, decided what I need. I'm working on a, getting a, my test bed computer together and I decided I wanted to get some extra memory. Well, instead of just getting cheap memory with it, I decided to get some uh, better memory for my computer. So we have two ramps, uh, two sets of RAM sticks that I have. I have the RIP G Skill, RIP Jaws, DDR4. It's going to be 2133. The cast latency, if anybody's wondering, is 1515, 1535. And then I bought the Corsair. RGB Pro Vengeance, whatever you call it, uh, PC3200. The cast is going to be 16, 18, 18, 36. So, um, obviously, this RAM is faster than this RAM. So, I want to see how it affects my CPU score. So, um, I'm going to run some Cinebench, my 3D Mark, and I want to see if uh, faster memory does improve my scores or anything. Uh, will it improve my gaming scores? Maybe I'll try a game on it and see if I can get a better performance on it. So I um, figured I'd record a video and document if it makes any improvement. I mean, it's both 16 gigs of RAM, two 8 gig sticks. I mean, yeah, I could have bought another 2 gigs and had 32 megs of RAM, but I wanted to see if uh, faster memory actually does make a difference. I mean, looking online, there are some tests that show it does. Some people say it doesn't. So. I just want to see for myself. So if anybody's trying to build a budget computer and has a way to get more, uh, what you call it, bang for the buck, maybe just doing faster memory does it. I don't know. So um, let's find out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug it into my uh, computer over here. It's my i7-8700K Asus Strix 2080. And um, we're running a solid state hard drive on it. So I'm going to plug it in and we'll see what happens. Okay, so computer's booted up with the memory, the DDR 242133. And what we're going to do now is we're going to run Time Spy. We're going to see what our um, what our score is using this memory. Everything is factory, no overclocks whatsoever. This is just how it came out of the box with that amount of memory. So we're going to run this test. And then after we run this test, I'm going to just actually take Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I'm going to run the bench stress test on it and see what our frames are. So I'm going to take these two tests get the baseline numbers for the 2133 memory. And then after that, I'm gonna take the DDR4, which we have over here, the Corsair Vengeance, the 3200 memory, and we're gonna pop that in and we're gonna see if it works, okay? We are running 16 gigs of RAM on both uh, DDR4 dual channel, and we'll compare it and we'll see if we have any improvement, if there is a difference between faster memory and slower memory when it comes to uh, gaming and our 3D Mark in our performance so we go ahead and run these tests run both of them and afterwards um, we'll take a look at the scores and we'll see what we got test is complete and this is our score 10,548 so CPU score 7,220 CPU 24 frames per second and all that stuff so this is running the DDR4 2133, 16 gigs of RAM, We're running it in dual channel with the i7-8700K and the RTX 2080. So um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to shut this thing down. I'm going to take out this RAM and we're going to pop in the Corsair Vengeance RAM, which we have right over here. We're going to run it at 3200 megahertz at stock frequency that it calls for. And we're going to run this test again. The DDR4-3200 is in, and it's lovely RGB goodness. I'm going to have to set that up so I can make it match the rest of my computer and my little blue theme, and I don't know, might play with it later, come up with some ideas or options. So we're going to run the 3D Mark Time Spy test, same test that we did just before, and we're going to see what this one does and see what performance we get. I mean, is there any performance gain from the, 3200, uh, the 23, 2133 to the 3200? don't know but we're gonna find out so uh, we're gonna let this test run and we'll compare the results after this oh and not... all right so the time spy tests are in and 10,693 and our CPU score was 7,786 our graphic score was 11,448 so if we compare it to our scores before for the DDR 2133 uh, 
10,548 uh, 10, going up to 10,693. That's uh, my math is horrible. Let's take a look at that. That's uh, 153 points. So we gained 153 points with this memory. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, the CPU test we gained from 7220 to 7786. We gained 500 and. Uh, over 500 points, 566 points, whatever it comes out to. What's real interesting is that our graphics score, we got 11,448. So we gained 11,483, 11,448. So we actually lost some points on the graphics score, which is weird, but okay. Hey, I'll take it. So yeah, so far we have improvement, which is uh, upgrading the memory over here in our 3D Mark score. So we're going to go ahead and save this as my DDR4-3200. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And we're going to run a benchmark test and see if we get any improvements over there. So, uh, so far so good. Okay, so for our final test, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're going to run it at 1080p settings. Uh, all maxed out. Everything that we need to do. So I'm um, still running DDR4 2133. So we're going to run it, go ahead and run the benchmark and see what our results are. All right, so this concludes our test for the Shadow Tomb Raider bench run. We have 68 frames per second. That's our frames rendered. CPU. All right, so on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we got 69 frames per second. So we gained one more frame per second, a couple more frames rendered and everything, running this 1080p max, all settings and all that good jazz. So we really didn't get a huge significant um, frame boost. I mean, maybe in different games you might get more. You might get maybe, I don't know, doing the math, maybe a couple more percentage more, but nothing significant that makes me say, hey, I need to go out and spend $100 on new memory when... I have memory here that works just fine. On the 3D Mark, we did get a um, decent frame boost, as I wrote down over there. Uh, we went from 10,548 to 10,693, so we did get a good frame boost. Uh, not frame boost, but we did get more points on this. And I'm sure if I was to take this DDR4 memory and uh, adjust the timings and clock it a little more, I probably could get more, squeeze more uh, points out of if I wanted to do it, and maybe even get more frames per second on Tomb Raider. I mean, I'm not gonna get like, 15 to 20 frames per second but instead of getting one i might get three to five maybe six frames per second so as far as going out like i said spending a hundred dollars on memory i wouldn't this memory was 97 dollars at best buy at the time of this video which is gonna be what january 2nd 2020 that memory i had this memory over here the g skill i bought this maybe a year and a half ago also spend i think about a hundred dollars back then when memory prices were high and ridiculous so right now that memory i believe is going for 60 70 dollars don't quote me but i think i looked at 60 70 dollars so i mean the 20 30 dollar difference that you're going to spend in better memory yeah aesthetic wise the rgb looks good i like it and i'll probably um fix that for some blue the pulse static breathing thing that would actually make it look good but you know other than that i'm not going to run out i wouldn't recommend running out and buying the fastest memory now if you're building a computer that 20 to 30 dollars if you're able to save 20 to 30 dollars in different aspects and just focus it on a better graphics card or a better cpu that's one way to start but if you're not concerned about the 20 to 30 dollars yeah go ahead and get this memory this memory is pretty cool i might do a separate video on a just a review on it by itself but as you can see not too much of a difference but yeah faster memory does give you a little more performance we have that over here demonstrated um all my variables stayed the same throughout both tests i kept them everything factory clock settings didn't overclock the video card or the graphics card or nothing like that this is right out of the box stock settings like i said if i tweak the memory more i could probably get more performance out of it um, both memories ran stable no issues on that no hiccups on that so they're both very good memory as far as uh this benchmark testing below um, if you want to chime in on the bottom, just leave some comments below. Let me know your opinions, your thoughts. I love criticism. I mean, I had a buddy of mine looked at the video and said, hey, some people are being negative. I don't take negative criticism as a bad thing. I actually learn a lot. I've had some people give me some great uh, criticisms, criticisms about some cases I, re uh, case I reviewed and 
um, some wiring I did on, on other videos and stuff like that. And I've actually learned from it and I'm learning to make my videos better and actually be more in depth on doing some of these guides and videos that I do. So if you got some input, I don't care. Just leave it in the bottom. I enjoy it. And uh, if you want to help out, just subscribe, like, and share it. You know, because I enjoy this community. And the whole point of uh, me starting this channel was to learn from everybody else and share some of my knowledge. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything, but I definitely want to learn and hear from you guys and see what you guys think and what you got to offer. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next.